I didn't really have a chance to watch the show during the opener this past Monday, but I had a chance to watch it again on Halloween night. Now, the one thing that I was really hoping for Supergirl is that this show would actually do her justice that the movie did not. We all know that the anime series actually did do a great job in making Supergirl look good, as well as, well, the comics have actually made her look good. But the motion pictures, as well, the motion pictures just didn't do her justice. So I'm hoping that maybe primetime TV will. Has it? <sighs> kind of. Not completely. Now... There's a lot of feminist undertones when it comes to this show, and that's the one thing that kind of pisses me off is that message. I don't want any feminist undertones in this show. I don't want anything that says girl power. I just want to have a nice show about a superheroine that has great villains, great action, and great suspense, and maybe an orig a decent origin story with a lot of growth. I didn't get any of that. Let's start off with the beginning, shall we? Now, at least we had a chance to see uh, Kalel before he flies off in his ship to Earth. And the strangest thing is, how did they know where Earth was? And is this in the same galaxy as Earth? But I, but let's move on from there. Ten minutes, and she was actually literally took off ten minutes after Kalel did. And we had a chance to see, you know, we had a chance to see her, her parents. Her dad was there said a few words, but she seemed more angry at her dad than her mom. Her mom, for some reason, was the shining star, the shining light in this entire show. So I'm like, okay, so the dad's kind of kicked off to the side, and here's all about mom. And I'm like, what? And, and that's... I, and then you, we all know what happens from there. She gets in the, she gets in the big uh, rocket ship, she flies off the earth, boom, see Superman there. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, there. But let's get into the big huge issues that I have of this. Or maybe I should start off with the good first. Maybe I should start off with the good, the cushion, the blow before actually talking about the bad because there's a lot of it. But let's talk about some of the good. The one thing I will say is at least we have a mom that we can care about. When it comes to Kara's mom, it seems like she has a really strong relationship with her mom. You can kind of tell that she does. And that's good. At least we get something out of that. But then we have the scientist parents. Okay, I'm really trying not to start with the bad here. But let's just start off. I'm, I'm trying to stick to good. Some of the characters were halfway decent. I actually did like the IT guy. He was actually pretty cute, interesting to watch. And he's somewhat relatable. With every person on this planet has ever been in the friend zone with somebody they really liked, you know, you can relate with that. Not to mention the guy was a whiz with computers and he seems like he, he was somewhat of a, her eye in the sky. Except he wasn't in the sky, he was in the ground. But he kind of did encourage her to be Supergirl when other people didn't. Well, when her sister didn't, he encouraged her to be Supergirl. So I can say that that's a positive. So he's kind of her best friend, if you can think about it. Her best friend that will never get out of the friend zone. And then you got Jimmy Olsen. You got the original Jimmy, and then you got the modern Jimmy. The modern Jimmy is a big, tall, well, not big, but he's a muscular, tall, milk dud of a black guy that has the personality and the suave and the finesse of Denzel Washington with the looks of Marsh Chestnut. Yeah, that Jimmy Olsen. It's not really so much because the guy's black. It's just you really can't relate to him. Like, at all. I mean, it seems like the guy actually expects to be chased. So, there's really nothing endearing about anybody like that. At least, I don't see anything like that. He's hot! I mean, don't get me wrong. The guy's easy on the eyes. But that's all he is, is man candy. And the reason why he's there was pissing me off even more. But I'm going to get into that later. And I'm trying to stick with the good here. Let's talk about the boss. Is the boss somewhat similar to Superman's boss? Yeah, but hey, it's Calista Flockhart, and she's pretty interesting to watch. I like her being mean. I like her being snarky. I like her being rude to people. It works. It works for her and her character. I enjoyed that in a way. And I enjoy the fact that she was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Carl. Carl was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with her. But you can tell there is somewhat semi need to be a little inkling of mutual respect there. And I know I'm going all over the place with this, but I am honestly trying to stay on topic. But I will say that her character actually is pretty interesting, and I really enjoyed that. Now, when it comes to Kara, 
she actually is a decent combination of how it is to be human as well as how it is to be alien on earth i actually do like that that compare well i I like the way they actually do make her a little bit more humane now i know that sometimes when it comes to shows like this as well as movies they put too much human factor in it but they put a decent blend for anybody that's not from this planet or not from for anyone who actually is an alien from another planet and you gotta not only learn about yourself but learn about your environment you're in you're gonna feel like a fish out of water and they did a good job with her in that way and i don't mind that i think that that's a great growing story and i like to see my superheroes with growth i like to see my superheroes actually learn from their mistakes excuse me and start learning more about their environment and that's how they have with her and i enjoy that i really do but then there's so much bad here that I have literally am trying to hold off on it, but let's just go ahead and just address the elephants in the room. Now, when it comes to the origin story, we know the movie completely messed that up because it was all over the place. And I don't know whether or not the the um, the anime series actually touched on her origin story, besides the fact that she was, uh, uh, besides the fact that she was Superman's cousin. I don't know. If you know, by all means, leave it in the comments. And of course, we know the comics probably explain her origin story in certain ways. But when it comes to this, when it comes to primetime TV, you expect the origin story. We didn't get one. We didn't even get an inkling. We just got the fact that she was 12 years old when she took off from Krypton. But at least you know how to read. So, I, the one thing I can say is this. The one thing that the movie kind of did a little bit of justice on is like, at least she learned. At least she went to school. And I can, I guess I can say the same thing about the origin story here. She was 12 years old. At least she could know her or read her own language. So I guess that's good. But we didn't have a chance to see any bonding with her, fa- with her, with her family before her family was killed. And her dad was just there. Like he was there saying only a few words. But it seemed like she didn't really care much for him. And it was all about mom. And the feminine, the feminist undertones in this show is the one thing that pisses me off the most. I didn't want any feminist undertones in this. I just want a superhero story. You can tell that there's feminist undertones everywhere because they are literally taking everything Superman's already done and turning it into feminism-ish-ness. I know that's not a word, but they're literally feminizing everything. They have a feminine version of General Zod, which is gonna probably be in the next episode. They got a feminine version of, of, of Clark Kent's boss. They, I wouldn't be surprised to have a feminine version of Lex Luthor. Which I really think should be her sister. But somehow they decide not to do that. But honestly, let's go into her sister. We all know that being a human on this planet is difficult enough. But imagine having an alien sister. An alien adopted sister that is better than you in every way. And somehow you have to learn to deal with that because your parents adopted her because Superman gave her to you. You would be not happy to see her. You would be pissed. And not to mention the fact you wouldn't be able to relate to her in any way at all. So yeah, you would sell her out. And honestly, that was an evil move. You literally used your sister to get a job. And they were like, oh no, she had reason. No, she did not have reason. Well, do you think you would honestly be friends with your sister and trust her after she did that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't even be crying, let alone giving her a hug afterwards and giving the stupid speech. I'm like, no chick, you sold me out. I don't necessarily trust you. I may not have every, I may not have any of my, my parents in this world, but I don't trust you. She sold her out multiple times. So you can literally call her your sister? I don't know. That's just me. And the biggest plot hole of all is how in the world did this wannabe MIB troop find out everything about her as well as her origin, as well as her mom, and also the name of the prison colony that came through the Phantom Zone? How do they even know about the Phantom Zone? Don't you think that's something that you should explain in the pilot for people to understand, like, really? What? Like what like seriously it made zero it made zero sense it really did that was a huge plot hole right there and that's something that should have been filled before they even decide to make this thing 
it's like they really didn't try. They really phoned it in. Like they really wanted to have Supergirl out in the in the forefront so quickly. They didn't bother to think about the gaping holes they left along the way. I really wanted this show to do well. I really wanted this show to be a really great show. But so far, it is just mediocre at best. There's really no originality in it at all. We didn't even see Superman. And I thought we would at least see him on the first episode or have somebody play him. You send freaking Jimmy Olsen to keep an eye on Kara? Really? Not to mention Superman would tell Jimmy Olsen about his cousin? Yeah. Somebody that looks like that Jimmy Olsen? Come on. Really? Guys, my overall thoughts is this. This show had a ton of potential. It had a ton of potential to be great. But with the feminist undertones. The way too fast pacing. The way... And can we talk about the fight scenes? Okay, the fight scenes were really slow. They were very slow, very sluggish. It was like they were fighting in a big jar of molasses. And honestly, with all of the technology that you have for these shows these days, you can at least step it up when it comes to some of the fight scenes. The flight was better than the fight scenes. The fight scenes were just slow. It, it was, I, I don't know what happened. It really wasn't fluid, it wasn't quick, it was slow. Besides the, okay, there, there's lots of cons here. Besides the, the really, really fast pace, Besides the really sluggish, slow as molasses fight scenes. Besides the huge plot holes. Besides the lack of origin story. I, I can say that it's, this show is just subpar. But it's not horrible. I mean, the characters are great interests. You know, you can possibly like some of them. And then the storyline that they actually have the prisoners breaking out of the Phantom Zone. And she has to put them all back. Yes, it sounds like an episode of Scooby-Doo. But it is interesting, and at least they're alien. They're not human. But then you also have the humans that fear, and, and somehow, yeah, they bring up the fear of Superman and all this other stuff. All I know is that this show's all over the place. I really wish I could like it more, but I really don't know. And seeing how this show is number one on CBS only shows that there's a lot of fanboys and fangirls for Supergirl out there. And they could care less how bad the show is. They just want to see Supergirl. But honestly, guys, I don't really know where it's going to go from here. I really hope they do improve in Season 2. But right now, they need work. Lots of it.